Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Happy holidays and welcome to this week's edition of Business in Hawaii. I'm Dylan Yanagida and we're broadcasting live from the Think Tech studios in downtown Honolulu. If you want to tune in live, we're at www.thinktechhawaii.com and you can subscribe to our programs and get on our mailing list at that site as well. The theme of Business in Hawaii is to share with you stories of successful business by local people. Our guests share with us their stories, their trials, their tribulations about their journey. In the Think Tech studio today is Brian Sampson, co-founder of True North and three-time startup pioneer. So we're excited to hear about that. Brian, welcome to the Think Tech studios today and the Business in Hawaii show. How are you? Excellent. Thank you so much for having me today. Oh, I've been looking forward to this interview for a long time. Um, tell us your background and, and how you got to Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> sure. It's a little bit of a, of a story, which is great. Uh, so born in Chicago, and that's where I was uh, uh, there until my 20s. Um, and then I started to migrate slowly to the West Coast. Um, I was in uh, Southern California for a couple of years, um, and then eventually made it up to San Francisco. Um, and that's where uh, the origination of this current company I'm, I'm co-founding, True North, and that led me to Argentina, and then eventually here to Hawaii. And there's you know probably all kinds of threads we can pull there, but that's the kind of the high level. That's right. And so now um, you've settled down in Hawaii. In fact, congratulations, because you're ex expecting your first. That's um, right. Thank so you. It's going to be homegrown in Hawaii. <laughs> We're so proud of that. Thank you so much. Yeah, my wife and I are, uh, are just absolutely thrilled to have a, a baby boy on the way. Ah, oh, very exciting time. Someone to carry on the True North <laughs> <laughs> legacy, the right? True North tradition. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. So um, tell me about starting up True North in Hawaii. How did that come about? How do you, how do you pick Hawaii? Yeah, um, so very interesting story. So um, uh, we, um, you know, as I mentioned, we were in uh, San Francisco, Argentina, and Hawaii, three places that actually couldn't be more different from each other. So um, I had been in San Francisco for quite some time, um, probably about five or six years, and just super immersed in the startup scene there. Um, worked for uh, some really interesting companies, some that did quite well, and some that really didn't do quite well. But that's really what's fun about uh, the startup world. You know, you're kind of making a bet on the roulette table, you know, to see which one pays off. Uh, so um, I was there, uh, and that's where I met my co-founder. His name is Alex, and we both worked at the same. Uh, it was actually a fintech company. Both worked at the same fintech company in San Francisco, and we started to kind of see some interesting opportunities that we wanted to, you know, poke some holes in and see if we we had a real business there. So it's really a global story. Um, we uh, we ended up. Um, uh, trying to seek funding from somebody we also knew from that fintech company who happened to be in China. So we uh, raised our, our angel round and then decided that um, the best place to put our sales team was going to be San Francisco. The best place to put our engineering team would be Argentina. And I actually, uh, my wife, I convinced my wife to go to Argentina with me for a little while. And uh, we established our company there, um, or at least the, the major development office there. Um, so that was uh, really interesting anyway, you know, living abroad in a different country, uh, getting that going. Um, but uh, we had a calling uh, that was just pulling us to Hawaii. Uh, so my wife uh, was born on Guam and, uh, and actually spent uh, most of her, her childhood living in Asia as an expat daughter. Um, so she lived in, um, in uh, Seoul, South Korea, uh, lived in Tokyo for a long time. Yeah. She speaks Japanese. And uh, her, uh, her entire family just kind of one by one, like dominoes, started to end up in Oahu. Um, so uh, aunties, uncles, grandparents, uh, parents, you know, siblings. So um, uh, 
So as we knew, we were looking to start our family, and you know, thanks, uh, we're so blessed to uh, to have one on the way. We knew that that would eventually draw us to Oahu, and having a, a company like ours, uh, where a laptop and an internet connection can make a lot possible. So that brought us to Oahu about two and a half years ago, and uh, we've been so thrilled to be here ever since, and uh, have started to really build uh, a little bit more of a business out here too. Um, so, for those of us non-tech savvy, <laughs> what is fintech? Sure, uh, that's a that's a great question. So, fintech is uh, is a little bit of a buzzword today, right? Um, now, uh, fintech is what it stands for is financial technology, and that's really where True North specializes in. Now, fintech, although it's getting a lot of airtime and play uh, nowadays. It's actually been around for a little while. Um, PayPal was kind of the first fintech company. So PayPal, as most people know, it's, uh, it's in the payments business. Um, but uh, fintech um, has really taken off um, over the last 10 years. So let me maybe start um, defining it a little bit and then what's really driven this revolution. So fintech, in a nutshell, is um, you know uh, this next generation of software that has to do with money, right? And almost everyone on the planet has some sort of connection with money, right? Now the the old school generation, um, it was really about the banking industry. The mm -hmm. banks were the place that you got your money, and um, and there's really two things that happen. Um, the global re recession of 2008 and 2009. Now, thankfully, Hawaii was, was really not very uh, impacted by that, especially compared to the mainland. And that's some, some really smart decision making by, uh, by the leadership here. And that was, that was amazing. Um, but what happened on the mainland is a lot of um, distrust over these financial institutions. Um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of credibility was really lost on Wall Street and some of these other major financial centers. Um, so, uh, um, so that really created this environment of, you know, what if, what if we had a, a new startup that could do all these things that, um, especially this millennial generation, uh, is more open to um, doing things online, you know, doing their banking and payments and uh, managing their money, their investments, uh, getting a mortgage. They'll do all those things online instead of going to a bank branch. So you have this comfort with technology um, and this, uh, this loss of credibility. And the third thing that's really kind of driving this is banks were doing everything, right? So you would go to your bank for your mortgage, your auto loan, uh, to manage your, your retirement accounts, um, you know, pay people, wire money, and so forth. Now, one of, the, one of my favorite sayings, I guess, is if you have 10 priorities, you have zero priorities, okay? And, uh, and where banks, I think, um, kind of struggled is they were trying to do 10 things, and these little pesky startups um, you know, decided they wanted to do one thing and only one thing and do it incredibly well. So they would pick payments, for example, and do payments better than anybody because they were laser focused. Mm -hmm. Or do mortgages um, and only mortgages and just do that better than anybody. So there was a real opening there. And, uh, and uh, just being in the fintech space, um, you can see all this venture capital just flowing. So not even counting the bigger companies that are getting into fintech, like a JP Morgan or Bank of America, just the, the little startup companies. Um, in the U.S. alone, you're seeing on average about $20 billion spent uh, as investment into fintech companies. And that's where we're, we're typically playing is those venture funded, the next generation, the new ideas in fintech. Wow. So Hawaii, we're so proud of being ingrained in our culture and supporting our legacy businesses. I, I mean, I can tell you that my grandparents insisted on banking with the same bank, sure. the same banker. <laughs> <You know. laughs> sure. Yeah, it's very much a relationship it, environment. It's very yeah. relationship driven. Um, tell me how you started talking about moving 
to a higher or a more advanced technology platform, Hawaii to a newer technology platform, knowing that we were this culture. Yeah, yeah, sure. So Hawaii is a really interesting place. Um, so uh, there's some, some great benefits to being a little more uh, risk adverse, right? Um, as in Hawaii really survived the Great Recession or a lot of these other you know, urban tech centers got, got hit. Um, but since I've been here uh, for about two and a half years, I've been like really inquisitive to the fintech appetite. Mm -hmm. And I've been uh, pleasantly surprised. Uh, there's some, some serious interest, a lot of enthusiasm. I have some, uh, some colleagues that are executives at banks here, and they're starting to think about um, blockchain and, um, and different things that they can move to, uh, like really interesting, powerful platforms and applications. So I see Hawaii in this, this really uh, great middle ground of not overdoing it with the risk, so they're still um, being a little more comfortable for, uh, for your average citizen. Um, but they're, um, they're testing the waters enough and starting to push some boundaries. And I think that's going to be a great intersection. Hawaii is really, uh, really in a, in a good spot. Fantastic. I know that um, you've been very thoughtful and very strategic about how you introduce Hawaii to this new type of technology. We see our, our banks changing platforms, sure. right? Banking's completely different now, yeah. right? Where and now it's, it's an experience, it's a customer experience going into our, into our banks. Um, but I do know that you wanted to make sure that what you brought and what True North brought to Hawaii was aligned with yeah. um, Hawaii's uh, goals, our leadership goals. I want to um, put up a picture of you and your lovely wife oh, and Governor you. Ige. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think we have that picture here. Yeah, thank you. Tell us about your meeting with um, Governor <laughs> yeah. Ige and how, how that conversation mm -hmm. sparked. Yeah, sure. Um, uh, yeah, it was such an honor for my wife uh, and, uh, to, uh, to have a chance to meet with the governor. Uh, that's actually at uh, Aloha Beer um, uh, right here in Kaka'ako. And, we had a chance to um, talk about tech and the future, and um, you know, really some uh, some things that that are coming to Hawaii. And and I love that he has an engineer background, right? So very pragmatic, you know, like a real very. problem solver. And and I love that he was very straightforward and and had some uh, some great ideas on how to tackle that. So it was such an honor to to meet with him and talk more about the the ideas for fintech. Fantastic. So. Um, Hawaii has an appetite for the old, yeah. but we also have an appetite for the new. Tell me what you think Hawaii is ready for, where we're going to go yeah. with, the, with the, the, the fintech movement. Yeah, sure. So when you, when you talk to people, um, what drives their banking decision, right? And to your point earlier, um, it can vary a little bit by demographics and age, right? Um, but when you see some of the, the newer generation, um, what drives their decision? It's actually no longer about that relationship. It's actually about convenience, right? So, um, so convenience isn't just having an ATM on every corner, but it's also, can I do this without having to leave my couch, right? Can I pay my friend back for that pizza last week with my mobile app, right? Can I, um, uh, you know, uh, search for and maybe secure a loan from the, the comfort of my, my couch and my laptop, right? Or even my mobile phone. Um, can I check the, the balances or trade, you know, stocks, right? From, so, um, so I see that really interesting. And Hawaii has a, a very enthusiastic um, a generation um, of, um, of people that are just like really, have a big appetite for, for this kind of uh, movement, right? So I see some, uh, some real exciting times ahead in the state. I know that uh, you have a team here locally that's really excited yeah. about what FinTech is going to bring to sure. Hawaii. We've got a photo of your, of your team here, and maybe you can introduce them so that uh, we notice, recognize them <laughs> on the street. Um, and that's your, you have a team of three right so now, there's locally. A, a three others locally, yeah, right. yeah. So, um, you know, Hawaii has just been a, uh, an amazing place for us to find uh, great talent. Um, and, you know, a lot of my colleagues talk about the 2% unemployment. Um, 
but I've just been blessed and fortunate to find three amazing people um, and hopefully more to come. Uh, so there's uh, 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 Stacy who uh, does operations, a lot of our contracts, and um, you know we've got a busy sales pipeline, so Stacy's uh, working on that. Uh, we have Patrick uh, who came on board as our chief financial officer. Um, and Patrick has a ton of experience in private equity and you know raising capital and things like that. And there's Ivy who's um, really been uh, a lot of our, our backbone with um, and supporting us on um, all kinds of projects and uh, she's often the face to uh, invoices and so forth with our customers. Um, so our, so our, our customers are in um, you know all over the world, Asia and the States and the, and the mainland and um, but they all, uh, they all know our Hawaii team quite well. Fantastic. We are going to take a short break, but when we come back, um, True North has wide wings, and mm -hmm. I'd love to hear more about your operations in different parts of the world, different yeah. parts of the United States. I think that will be really exciting. We are going to take a short break. This is Business in Hawaii, and we'll see you back here shortly. You can be the greatest, you can be the best, you can be the king, come banging on your chest. You can beat the world, you can beat the war, you can talk to God, go banging on his door. You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock, you can move a mountain, you can break rocks, you can be a master, don't wait for luck. Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself. Aloha, this is Winston Welch. I am your host of Out and About, where every other week, Mondays at 3, we explore a variety of topics in our city, state, nation, and world, and uh, events, organizations, the people that fuel them. It's a really interesting show. We welcome you to tune in, and we welcome your suggestions for shows. Um, you got a lot of them out there, and we have an awesome a studio here where we can get your ideas out as well. So I look forward to you tuning in every other week where we've got some great guests and great topics. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to come away inspired like I do. So I'll see you every other week here at 3 o'clock on Monday afternoon. Aloha. Welcome back. This is Business in Hawaii. Today joining us is Brian Sampson, co-founder of True North and true startup entrepreneur um, and local boy because now you're going to raise your family here That's and I'll right. tell you your family's not going to let you leave <laughs> <laughs> so you can bet on planting some roots here I think that'll that'll be great um, when we left we were talking about True North its entry into Hawaii and how you're aligning with Hawaii's leadership and bringing tech um, and fintech to Hawaii mm -hmm. um, but we also know that you expanded across the water, even yeah. further from Hawaii, but into Argentina. Sure. Tell me, what led you to Argentina? What is business? What is it like doing business in Argentina? And how the connections come together? Sure. How do you connect San Francisco, Argentina, <laughs> Hawaii, and make your team feel the culture of, of all of those places? Sure. Uh, great question. Thank you. Um, so. Uh, when, when my co-founder uh, Alex and I were, you know, looking at, and we we had, you know, the world was our oyster, right? We could have gone anywhere, and um, uh, and software development centers have been all across the world, right? Um, they've been in India and China for a long time. Uh, Eastern Europe is becoming more popular as well, um, but we saw kind of this hidden gem in South America. And uh, in particular, Argentina. And there were a couple of really interesting reasons kind of on the surface. And then one in particular that as you really scratch into it, it was like, wow. So, um, so on the surface, uh, you know, you look at the time zone. So if you're a Hawaii business and maybe you're uh, offshoring into Asia or offshoring into even like New York or Eastern Europe, right? Um, that time zone can get a little, little tough. Um, but if you're a, a company in, uh, say, Texas or California, um, you, and you're, you're, uh, you're outsourcing, you want to work with a company or engineers that are on your time zone, right? 
So just the way the map works, you know, it's, uh, you've got a, a big overlap. And what, what actually helps that is Argentina has a very strong uh, Spanish and Italian, and also German influence. Um, so they, uh, they eat dinner very late. So I learned the hard way a couple times, uh, you know, I'll uh, go out looking to, for a restaurant around 7 o'clock for dinner, and nothing's even open. <laughs> so. So we're, we're, we've been, we're starving a couple times, but um, around 10, 11 p.m., that's when the restaurants really start, uh, start going, and it, it blew my mind. Uh, you'll see families with, with young kids come in around midnight for just to start their dinner. Um, but what, where that actually helps is you have almost this entire day of overlap, right? Um, and then the other th a couple other things that we really like. You know, number one, um, outside of Brazil, it's the, um, it's the largest country in Latin America, both by size and population. So we've got some room to grow there. And, and in Brazil, of course, they speak uh, Portuguese. Um, but Argentina has been rated as the highest English fluency country in all of Latin America. Um, so we have, you know, uh, very easy conversations. And it's actually very conversational. Um, you know, uh, our, our employees often watch American Netflix shows, you know, so they're watching, uh, you know, the latest episodes of House of Cards or whatever, you know, on, uh, um, and they know, you know, uh, U.S. slang and U.S. culture, so it's really interesting. Um, but uh, education uh, is, is uh, subsidized by the government, healthcare, so quality wow. of life is really good. Mm -hmm. um, engineering talent is spectacular. Um, but my, my favorite reason, my favorite reason for Argentina, um, besides all that and like the amazing food and culture and cuisine, is um, uh, the country, um, to no fault of the population, but the country's experienced um, a very volatile economy for decade after decade after decade. Now, um, what happens in that is uh, if you're um, just a regular person, right, you know, a regular citizen of the country, you're experiencing, um, you know, this up and down inflation and, and impact to your life. So this has created a, um, uh, just a, uh, you know, your average citizen of Argentina is very resilient, very adaptable, very flexible. They just know how to solve problems in a way that I think it would make me like my my head spin, right? Um, but they just, you know, it's a regular Tuesday for them, and um, and our customers love their problem solving skills. They sound agile, um, and in fact, we have a photo of your Argentina team, um, big team. Oh, thank you. Yeah, right. I th that actually might be a little outdated. We're um, scratching about 80 today, so wow. yeah, in about three years, we're, uh, we're about 80 people now, and uh, with the, the majority in, in the Buenos Aires office. So not only are you contributing to Hawaii's economy and our community by bringing jobs and efficiencies, technology efficiencies. Um, you're doing that in other countries as well, and I think that's so, so commendable. Um, when we uh, spoke before the interview, we talked about um, leveraging a distributed team. Mm. Well, talk to me about the concept of yeah. distributed team. What, what, what does that mean? Sure. So, um uh, you know, I, I think there's there's still there's a lot to be said for you know being in the same office and so forth, and that that really you know drives your culture. Um, but I think when you look at um, like your access to talent, and talent is everywhere today, right? When you look at your access to talent, you know you start with this giant funnel, right? If you consider the the world, but then if you decide they only have to be in my city, you've cut that down dramatically. And then they have to be in my city and meet my bar. They have to, um, um, you know, meet my culture. They have to be available and looking. So now you've got this, what started with a really giant pool, this very, very tiny group to pull from, right? Um, so we decided to look at that from an inverse direction, right? Um, our Hawaii team actually all works remotely, right? Um, we still get together, you know, over, uh, you know, for poke and, you know, and the latest iced coffee and stuff. but. Um, uh, but we, um, uh, you know, we really found that, um, you know, people, uh, they want to be trusted, they want to be treated like adults, um, uh, they don't want to have somebody watching over, the, oh, it's, uh, you know, 9.05, you're five minutes late. They just want to get their work done, be treated like adults, and 
Um, same thing in, in San Francisco. We do have an office there, but there's a lot of flexibility. And same thing in Argentina. There's a lot of flexibility for the team. Um, it's really a results-driven environment. Um, so if you can treat people like adults there, um, you can really uh, widen your, your access to amazing talent. Um, now, I won't say that it's easy, um, but we have used a lot of technology, and especially we're a, a tech company. We've used a lot of technology to help us get there. So we have different software to track our project statuses. We tag each other. There's constant updates and email. Uh, you've got um, all these things that I'm sure our audience is aware of, like Skype and Slack and Zoom and uh, Monday.com and Jira, you know, all these different tools mm -hmm. that we're um, uh, you know, putting our notes and so forth in. Um, but there's also no substitute for a video conference, right? Um, so we, we really try to take advantage of that, um, especially when you recognize how important nonverbal communication mm -hmm. is. Um, especially when you're not in the same, you know, uh, the same proximity. Um, so again, it wasn't easy, but um, but I think uh, um, our team, as long as they're challenged, as long as they're working on projects that they like, um, it's really helped us um, get some of the best people out there. What I admire about you and um, the business that you're building is, because I have an HR background and I know you do as well, that what you've done with True North is really built company culture, even if you are thousands of miles away. We have another picture um, of part of your Argentina team with some gifts from Hawaii. <laughs> yeah. So maybe you're bringing some Hawaii into um, into their lives, and I think that's yeah. that's that's amazing, right? To yeah. be able to build a company with culture, mm -hmm. even if you are thousands of miles away. Sure, yeah, we, we've really tried to bring a little Ohana to Argentina, right? Um, and they are three totally different places, but um, I think our, our Argentina team really appreciates the Hawaii spirit. Um, our Hawaii team really appreciates the San Francisco and the Argentina mm -hmm. spirit. So um, there's a lot of passion in all three places. And um, we just really try to prioritize um, teamwork and accountability and you know just a fun work environment and uh, um, it's it's worked out really well so far in the short time we have left I think we have about a, a minute to go tell our tell our viewers about uh, startup businesses in Hawaii what's the temperature for that yeah sure so um, so I spent a long time in with all these startups in San Francisco and um, uh, and as I come out here and uh, I've spent time at uh, the blue startups office and um, and just talking to other entrepreneurs, um, it's really exciting. Um, and with the way that uh, the world has, has kind of uh, democratized uh, the ability for uh, to find information, right? Uh, there's a good chance that whatever problem you're dealing with, someone somewhere in the world has not only uh, dealt with it, but they've documented it. Uh, so all that is is kind of wide open. Um, and then as you start to see uh, more more risk taking, you know, in Hawaii and then more access to capital. And especially, um, I've seen uh, um, a, a bigger drive on um, that, that seed stage and mm -hmm. angel mm -hmm. stage of, right. of capital um, that can really get off the ground. So if I could leave any you know, kind of last minute tips for entrepreneurs. Please do. Um, the, um, the pitch, pitching investors is so excruciatingly difficult and you know, brings up nerves and, and anxiety. Um, but I would, I would in, encourage them to try to push towards a definitive decision. Um, a lot of times you'll hear a maybe, and a maybe is kind of the worst thing that you want. You either want a yes or a no. Um, so make sure that your assumptions are clear in what you're trying to do and how you think it will play out, and then try to get that yes or no, and you'll be on a, a really good track. Brian, I would love to have you back. And, you know, we've run across entrepreneurs just like yourself to talk about those exciting tips for folks who are willing to, to venture into startup. Um, we are out of time, and I could go forever on this conversation, <laughs> but I really wanted to thank you for joining us. So excited to watch True North um, take off yeah. um, and watch your team grow and, and all the wonderful things that you're doing aligning with um, our leadership here. So thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. It was my pleasure. We are out of time, but thanks again to Brian and True North for joining us, and a huge thank you to the production staff 
um, a happy holiday to our viewers. If you would like to be a guest on our show, please email your information to shows at thinktechhawaii.com. Business in Hawaii airs every Thursday at 2 o'clock, and we look forward to seeing you here next week.